Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. In a previous video, I showed you where I got some fabric that was given to me by a lady that lives a few hours away. And in that video, I did mention that if you saw a fabric that you liked and you wanted me to make something, let me know what you want me to make and I'll do a video for it. Anyway, I've chosen this particular fabric. It is a really cute kids dinosaur print. And I've had a few people request something to be done with the kids prints and a couple of suggestions as well. So in this video we're going to do a drawstring backpack and this will be perfect for kids library books. Um, it'll also be great as the pattern itself will be great as a knitting bag so um, you can have a drawstring bag on your back and you can carry your knitting projects. Don't stab yourself with your needles though. Or you can just have your craft supplies in there. But for kids, this will also be great just to put their overnight clothes in if they're having a sleepover somewhere or if they're going to the beach, they can throw all their bits in there and happily go and wander off with dinosaurs on their back. So stick around and I'm going to show you how to make uh, this drawstring bag. Now I'm also going to show you how to do French seams in this particular bag as well. Hang around. What we need are two pieces of fabric 16 inches wide by 21 inches long or 41 centimeters wide by 54 centimeters long and two contrast pieces of fabric just four inches by four inches or 10 by 10 centimeters we're going to fold that in half on the diagonal and just create two triangles like that give that a press and we also need two lengths of cord which is about two meters long or 40 inches long and then we need a couple of eyelets or grommets. The first thing we want to do with the top of our fabric is mark a line right across the top of both pieces two and a half inches from the top. We'll make a mark at two and a half inches from the top edge or six and a half centimeters. Just draw that in and we'll do the same for the other one. Take one piece of fabric and make sure you've got your pattern going the right way so you don't want to have one upside down from the other and we'll take our corner pieces and these corner pieces are to actually stabilize the bottom of the bag when we put our eyelets in so we're just going to fold that in half on the diagonal and place it on the corner of the fabric like that and we'll do that for the other side as well and then we're going to place our other piece of fabric directly over the top line up your bottom edges and the corners With our black triangle fabric wedged underneath, we can stitch right along the bottom edge. Uh, we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we'll stitch all the way along both side edges up to the blue line there. And you can see underneath here, we have our little triangle piece secured in between. Back stitch at the beginning and the end and we'll just do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way along the bottom and both sides. Okay, we've done our quarter of an inch seam along the bottom and then we're just going to enclose the long sides, the long edges, up to the blue line there and we'll just do a back stitch there as well. Then we can trim the corners. We want to turn this through and we want to have nice crisp corners. And we also want to just reduce the bulk in the seam there. So I'm just going to reduce that by half. Once you've trimmed that to a half, it'll come down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We can turn this through right side out and poke the corners out so they sit nice and flat. We can take the bag and starting from the opening at the top here, the two and a half inch opening, we're just going to take the seam on the side and we're going to stitch this closed from here, another quarter of an inch all the way down to the bottom, stitch down on the little corners, turn around and come all the way around and back up the side. It's at this point you want to make sure that you've got your little black or contrast fabrics on the same side as well.
with this section here that hasn't been stitched down at the top, fold the raw edges in on both sides of the fabric until they're in line with the side seam. So just fold those, that raw edge in like that, give it a press and do the same for the other side. So you just want to make sure that that's nice and clean on the side edges. Once you've done that, again at the iron, remember the drawn line that we've got along here, we've got a two and a half inch line. Take your fabric and fold it in half up to the two and a half inch line. So we've got the raw edge here and that's just folded in half and go and give that a press. So once you've pressed that, you'll have the side edge folded in, the top edge folded down and you can see that this is going to create a nice clean edge for where we put our draw cord. Now, once you've done that, take the fabric, open it out again and just fold it in half to the fold line and we can clip that in place. Do the same for the other side. Once you've folded the raw edge to that fold line, so we'll take this fold and we'll fold it over to the drawn line that we had earlier. So we can just pin that in place and remember to keep your raw edges folded under. Now that we've pinned this in place, just make sure that your edges line up. So we want to have the edges on the side here lining up so that they're nice and even at the top. Same at the other side. And what we can do now is take this to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way down this bottom edge here and we'll do the same for the other side. And then we'll just do a narrow top stitch at the top. So starting at one of the opening ends here, We'll just put that under the machine, we'll do a back stitch at the beginning and the end and stitch all the way around. Once you've stitched the bottom row down, let's go back to the machine and stitch the top edge down just about an eighth of an inch from the top. Okay, now we're ready to put our eyelets in place just there and our draw cord. Now we need to make a mark here for our eyelet. The best thing to do is just take one of the rings of your eyelet and pop it over the top there and make a mark. So wherever you'd like to put your eyelet, put your eyelet where you want to and make a mark in the center and that will be the center of your eyelet. Then we can go and measure, so that's an inch and an inch. So we've got one inch from either side and we'll do the same thing on the other side. That way we'll get a nice even measurement. So one inch from the bottom, one inch from the side, X marks the spot and we can put our eyelets in place. What we need to do now is take a block of wood and a punch if you've got one. If not, you can just take some sharp scissors and poke a hole through all the layers here. So centre your punch over the mark and give it a whack. Now if you have an eyelet or a grommet machine, we can use that to place our eyelets in. So take the one that's got the hat, it looks like a hat, place that in the bottom there. And we want our black contrast fabric to be faced down because I want the um, the nicer side of the eyelet to be showing on the black side. So I'm going to face that down, pop that over the top of the eyelet, place the washer over the top of that and then press down. And that looks pretty good. Same for the other one, pop the hat down black side down and place the washer down and press again. So that looks pretty good with the eyelets on there like that. I like the look of the, the black contrast fabric, gives a little bit of extra stability, just takes away the fullness of the colouring that's there um, and the, black, the black's a really nice contrast. All we need to do now is put our cord through. 
grab your cord and I'm using a bodkin here but you can also use a safety pin to draw your cord through. With a bodkin you just put the claws over the edge there, push the ring down and it holds the cord or ribbon or elastic in place. And what we're going to do here is feed the cord in through the top there, bring it out the other side and bring it through and keep on going straight through until you get back to the beginning again. Pop it through there. Remove your bodkin and you can centre your cord so it's nice and even on both sides. So just pull that until your cord is nice and even on both sides. Then we'll take the two ends here. So we've got it coming out the side here and then we want the cord coming up from underneath the two cords tie them together in a knot and depending on the thickness of your cord and the size of your eyelet you might actually want to do a double knot so tighten that as much as you can and even though this will hold that in place I'm actually going to do a double knot that's not going anywhere and we'll do the same for the other side grab your other cord and put the bodkin on there rather than coming in from this side we're going to come in from the other side and feed the cord all the way through Come out where the cord is here and continue around until you get back to the beginning. Level it off just like you did with the first one and once you've got your cord pulled through it's leveled off, you've got the top there, come back up underneath and we'll tie this in a double knot as well. And then our bag's done. And there we go, our bag is completely finished. And the only thing I haven't done is popped a label on. I'm going to go and do that. So I'm just going to pop one of my labels on down here. And that's it. There we've got two completely different bags. One's for a kid, maybe put their pyjamas in for a sleepover or a library bags, library books, um, even their swim gear if they're going to the pool at school. And this one would be a great craft bag to put your knitting, crocheting, anything like that in there. So it's with thanks to some input from a couple of viewers. Now I've got loads of input on my last video about the fabric. So Leslie and Sue suggested uh, a drawstring bag for with kids prints. That was Sue and Leslie had also suggested some kids backpacks oh, and uh, craft or knitting bags. So I thought I'd kill like three birds with the one stone, but without actually killing any birds. We've got this backpack, a drawstring backpack which will be perfect for crafters and knitters. If you're going to the beach and you just want to throw your bathers and your wet towel or something like that in there, draw it in and you've got a nice sling there to put over your shoulder. And likewise for the kids, we've got a really nice, fun dinosaur print with a contrast green stripe at the bottom. And again, we've got the drawstring and the shoulder string for the backpack. A couple of fun bags made with the fabric that I got in the last lot from Joan. So I'm really, really appreciative. Thanks to everyone for your suggestions. I've got pages of suggestions of things to do with the fabric that I got and I will get onto them soon enough. Okay, now pricing. The fabric cost me nothing. The cord actually cost me nothing because I've recycled that or rescued it from another bag. So I've got meters of cord and I've just reused that. The only expense is my label, which is negligible, and also the little eyelets that I use. I buy those on eBay. Um, if I can find a link for something, um, I'll pop a link in the description box below. Uh, so look, there was no expense for me in these two bags. They took about 20 minutes to make. So based on my charge out rate of $40 an hour, um, I would probably just price these out at $15 each. I think $15 is a fair price. Now keep in mind, this is $15 Australian. Things are really, really expensive here. So I'm going to put these bags out at $15 each. I'm not charging the fabric because I didn't pay for the fabric. And I do always tell people that if I get the fabric for free, they get the product for free. You just have to pay a proper labour rate. Hope you've enjoyed this video 
And I hope you enjoy these bags made with the latest lot of fabric that I received. Catch you next time.